Hello and welcome to this new episode of the Developer Lab podcast, the show where we explore how modern companies build and grow developer tools. My guest today is Jakub Chakon. Jakub is the CMO at Neptune AI, a DevTools startup that helps developers to lock, store, and organize all their machine learning model data in one place. Jakub is also well known for his newsletter Developer Market Peer and his developer marketing Slack community, where he's providing useful resources for everyone interested and developer marketing. Before getting into developer marketing, he was a data scientist, stock trader, pro chess player, and a theoretical physicist. All right. Hi, Jakob. Thanks for joining me today. Very excited to have you here on the show. Maybe to get started, can you tell us a little bit about your story into developer marketing? Hey, Jonathan. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, having me here. I'm I I think I listened to every episode so far, um, so I, I I love the show. Great to be here. Big honor. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a great job. So um, my story my story is actually quite interesting, but I I kind of feel and then from talking to people, it seems that most people in developer marketing has sort of like weird stories of how they got into this uh, you know interesting place. So um, so for me, what happened was I before joining Neptune or before Neptune was a company. I, I was a data scientist working, you know, building machine learning models, a lot in computer vision domain. And, uh, I worked at a software house that focused on, uh, you know, machine learning use cases. And internally, uh, some folks built a tool to, you know, to manage the process a bit better. Right. And, uh, over time, uh, the CTO of that company, Piotr Niedrich, he, he realized, Hey, maybe let's, you know, spin it up, you know, spin it off as a, as a product startup and asked me to, you know, if I wanted to join as a sort of like a, you know, dev rally, you know, person uh, started off, right? And and so I figured, you know, it's an interesting thing to do. So I did. And at the beginning, you know, the, I think, you know, month two or month three, uh, the marketing team joined and the marketing team was gone within a month. And then we, you know, we uh, worked with a consultancy that helped us with, uh, you know, uh, marketing, but we were very early. We didn't really understand it. It didn't connect that well, you know, it seemed for us, like we were not ready maybe for, for their help. But long story short, like, you know, we went through this, went through that, and then, you know, we were on our own again, right? And we started looking for a head of marketing. And, and so, uh, during one of the interviews for, for the head of marketing, you know, the, uh, I had a, you know, one on one with them and, and mid, mid conversation, he says, Hey, listen, like, you know, the product, you know, the user, right? Like you were the user before, you know, the product, um, like, wouldn't you want to run it? And maybe I'll help advise, you know, and, and I was by that time, I was like interested in, in a little bit in marketing because I was like, Hey, I mean, you know, it seems hard because, you know, people couldn't do it. Right. So maybe I'll, you know, try and try and learn it. And, you know, came back home, thought about it. And then, you know, next day I spoke to, to my CEO and said, Hey, Piotr, I'm learning. I'm going to learn this, you know, and he said, Hey, you know, <laughs> let's do it. I guess that's how I got here. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And I mean, I think today you're probably even running the most popular Slack community for developer marketing, or at least it's the only one I know even, yeah. and a newsletter. So is that also kind of how you got started with that or what's the story behind that? Yeah, I mean, that's, it's a great question. So the story is ba basically this, like two years ago when I, um, I was like looking for, uh, you know, people to connect, people to talk to, you know, to exchange ideas, to figure out whether uh, some of the things I, you know, I believe uh, about developer marketing or, you know, yeah, b about, um, you know, dev to marketing are, you know, are true. What, what people think. Right. And I started, you know, Googling, looking for, uh, for, for places and, you know, and I couldn't find anything. Um, so. I figured, hey, uh, how about I, uh, you know, I start um, writing about it, and by doing that, I, I may get some people who, you know, who who are interested in in, in similar things, and um, and that's how it, how this whole whole thing started. Because, um, you know, I knew I had a lot of uh, you know ideas and things that I'm like searching around, uh, you know, around the internet and and thinking about things, and you know, and and saving those you know screenshots and and notes around some great ideas for like how to solve DevX in this uh, particular you know situation, or how people tried and improve conversion on 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 this blog, or you know, or write this uh, hacker news story or something like that. And um, and and so I figure, hey, I mean, most of those things. I could probably share, you know, like, uh, and, and maybe people would find them valuable. And that's, that's what I did. And, um, and funny enough, like, uh, 
very early when I started, I actually, you know, searched again for something and I found marketing to dev uh, community, Slack community. It was uh, 30 people, I think, when I joined, mm. something like that. It was like very early. Uh, it was run by Rona Ganantra and uh, Seba Gudelo. But I was like so active, like asking so many questions, posting so many things at the beginning that, you know, they asked me, hey, maybe you want to like, you know, uh, call, call around, it, around this with me. And over time, uh, Seb, uh, you know, went to do um, different things, uh, I think focusing on the product and um, and we actually added two more folks to, uh, you know, to help grow this, uh, uh, Florian, Florian Marion and uh, Ophir Prusak. And, um, uh, you know, they've been doing an amazing, amazing job growing this to... Um, I think we're like 900 or almost 900 people right now. So it's, it's pretty, pretty good and pretty big and very active. That's, I think that's the most important part, you know, like it, it is actually valuable. Yeah, totally agree. Um, I think it, it's probably my favorite community at this point. Awesome. Uh, I think you did an inc- incredible job on, on building that. Also the people in there are so, so friendly and open. So big, big shout out to the, to the developer marketing community. Thank you. I think not only the community in your newsletter was a success or is a success. Um, I also read on your on your website that you managed to scale Neptune AI's traffic to three million unique visitors per year, which is like a really impressive number for a B two B product, especially on the stage that you are. How did you kind of manage to do that? What's kind of the the secret sauce behind that? Yeah. No, uh, thanks for asking. And, and yeah, I do, do think it's a, it's a pretty big, pretty big accomplishment. So the way, you know, the way we approached it, basically we, we thought about the readers, right? Like always, I think with those things, you should think about, you know, the, the readers and, and, you know, what they will find valuable and, and sort of like start there. Right. And, and so when we thought about it, um, you know, very quickly, I mean, it's, it's sort of obvious now, but at, at that time, maybe it wasn't like, hundred percent obvious, but very quickly it became obvious that, um, that you need technical writers, um, that you need people who, you know, at the very minimum were, you know, getting into that space and they, you know, maybe they're devs in some other space and are getting into your space, but that's the very, you know, that's the lowest sort of like bar, I think for the technical reader. Right. And, but ideally those would be people who work, uh, you know, day job, the same sort of uh, position or role that your readers are, right? And they they share things, mm-hmm. right? So so that was very quick, you know. Very quickly we realized that, and and so it became quickly, but uh, it became clear that we need to somehow get those people, right? And um, but then then it becomes a problem of like, okay, so how do you get those devs to write, you know? And um, <laughs> and there are like many, you know, options of how to, you know, how to solve it or how to think about it and a very interesting approach I, I i heard some some time ago was from uh from gonto who was ex vp of marketing at al zero where they they basically figured hey let's just hire full-time engineers in you know san francisco um to write but since we're here in in uh you know in in poland uh we figured that maybe you know maybe that's not a you know the best idea for us you know at this stage so maybe we're not going to do that and also like thought, hey, people who have the most valuable things to say, they will be working day job, right? So, so they, you know, like they probably shouldn't even work full time, right? Maybe a few could, but, um, you know, at scale, they, they, they couldn't, right? So, so we figured out, hey, I mean, it is clear that you, you have to build some sort of a, you know, a content program, right? You, some sort of a writer's mm-hmm. program. And that's what we build. Like we offer the, you know, I think at the beginning, even today, I think it's like three to six hundred dollars per article. Uh, we actually have a you know it's a, it's a public um, you know page on our website where you know people can apply, right? And and then we would just uh, you know vet those uh, writers and and some you know some would apply who who are great. Sometimes you you'd have to find great writers somewhere else, right? Uh, you know as you go through the blogosphere and you you see people who who write great stuff. Um, but overall, you you try to build this. Um, this program of, of many folks who can write for you. Right. Cause like, you know, like they will not write very often. They will write sometimes. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, you need a pool of those folks. If you want to have something that is predictable when it comes to like writing. Right. And, um, but that's, that's a part of the story, right? Like you, you need, like, this is a part where it's like, it's, it's, you know, you have to do it because otherwise, um, you know, without it, uh, there is no way, right? This is this is like uh, 
uh, you know, this condition one, if you will. And then the second thing is like, you need to have a strategy of like, you know, how, how do you want to, what do you want to write about? You know, because um, if you let those writers sort of, you know, um, go loose and, and do whatever they want, this very likely will not align with your strategy, you know, with the, the strategy of, of, of what you want to achieve. Right. So so then it becomes a thinking of like, you know, uh, what are the things that you care about? Like you as a as a company care about what is like close to your product or close enough to your product. Right. Where there is a big enough overlap. Then you think about uh, those all of those different stages, um, you know, from classic marketing books, you know, coming from, you know, unaware to, you know, to to product aware, so like to, you know, to problem aware, solution aware, product aware, most aware, and 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 you try to fill those gaps with, uh, you know, with content for, you know, those all those different things, right? And and um, you know, if you you understand, you have the strategy, and you have writers, and you have discipline to, you know, and and the buying from the company to you know, to scale something like this, give it, you know, what was it, three or four years and and we're the the, the biggest blog in in, in in this ML ops uh space or or even, you know, maybe one of the bigger one in ML. Yeah, so so basically it's it's doing something like uh, you know, Digital Ocean did, for example, and uh but but trying to understand like what exactly, you know, is your take on it, your sub niche, your uh your focus and and sticking with it for for long long enough to see those those results. That's super super impressive, and I think also really overlooked um, in many companies. I don't know many dev true companies that have such a content program. Um, how was how big was Neptune AI when you started it, or what kind of stage were you at when you decided okay we're gonna invest into that yeah. content program? Because obviously it's like a it's like a long-term project, right? Until you see returns, it might take a year or two, or, or maybe maybe even more. I guess. Mm -hmm. No, that's a, it's a it's a great question. So, so I actually like to think about a lot of the things as um, as games and as uh, you know as investments, uh, right? So, it, with the, in in this case, it was um, you know looking at some of the you know some of the competitors, some of the folks in the space. Um, um, very early, right? So almost, almost when I started, uh, you know, maybe, maybe it was like, uh, you know, a few months after I, I, I took the role of, Hey, I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, try and lead marketing. Right. Um, I was thinking like, what are the things that, um, that people are not really doing in the space, you know, where we could potentially do. And it's not that they, you know, that maybe they didn't see the opportunity or, or, you know, they just had different opportunities, right? Everyone has a different hand that they're dealt and, and, you know, and they can play different, uh, you know, like they have different plays, right? The different plays that are aligned with their, uh, strengths and weaknesses. Um, so for us, I thought, Hey, you know, this is something that we could, we could do because, you know, like, uh, it's something that is, uh, you know, very strategic, very, uh, you know, you, you need to be analytical and how you, you approach it and think about it and all those different, you know, things around processes to set up and, Figure, hey, we could do that. So my first hire was actually a, a person who was like super focused on SEO, not in the uh, dev tool space, but just generally, you know, uh, SEO, uh, SEO content. And and so we worked very closely together. And 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 you know, almost from day day one after after he joined, we started thinking about those different, um, you know, different things to write about. And and if you start. Like you mentioned, you, you wait a year and it's, you know, it's sort of true with a lot of things, you know, that it, that it takes time. But I think, um, people overlook, uh, those, those opportunities that are there for, uh, maybe, you know, uh, long tail keywords or, you know, things that are just, um, not very competitive, you know, like mm -hmm. you, there's like literally nothing for a particular thing and you know, your customers are searching for it. So if there's something yeah. that, you know, your customers are searching for and, um, and there is nothing really good on that subject, that's usually a good place to start. And, and then you can actually see results very quickly, even on a fresh website, you know, like, um, just how do yeah. you find those? How do you find those keywords? Yeah. Um, <laughs> one part of it is, um, you know, is thinking through the journey of that customer, you know, and, and those could be, um, like a good example I have, uh, that is, it's not ours, but it's, it's very easy to like, you know, see how, how this could, could work, right? It, it actually comes again from, from all out zero and, and one of the, uh, podcast episodes I, I listened to with Gonto. So what they did was they, you know, they went through the journey of setting up authentication, right? And during that journey, they identified the 
problems that people would hit. So errors that they would hit, right? And they figured, hey, you know, we have to include those. You know, those are the things we're going to include so that when people hit those errors, those problems, they will find us. You know, because uh, it's uh, one of those things where, you know, authentication, just as just as experiment tracking, you know, which is our uh, market segment, they're not very sexy. You know, it's not something where, you know, like you wake up, you know, in the morning and you're like, yeah, like I want to learn experiment tracking or I want to learn um, uh, authentication. Right. It's something that that happens, you know, um, you know, you hit some problems and you find it. And then ideally you you want to um, connect it right somehow or solve it. And then ideally forget about it and never come to that problem again. You know, so um if that's true, then, you know, you have to think through that journey and, you know, like people will not search, you know, I, I don't know if anyone ever searches something like that, but like, you know, you know, 21 ways of doing authentication better in, you know, 2023. <laughs> I don't know, like, you know, like no, nobody's <laughs> searching that, right? But they will search for the error, you know, they will search for, you know, uh, the, you know, the, the tools that solve particular sub problem, you know, maybe they're gonna, you know, start with open source. And then when they understand, you know, why this open source is like not really ideal for them, they want to look for, you know, alternatives to that, or uh, they want to, uh, you know, solve a particular jobs to be done and they type that in. So, you know, really understanding, you know, thinking through that journey and, and doing that, that user research with your users or, you know, listening to, you know, customer conversations or, or reading through Reddit's, uh, when people talk about the space or the, you know, your product, alternative products, there is, there is just so much, so much, you know, so many gems in there that, um, you know, that you can use. Cool. Yeah, I think I understood now how you kind of define what you want to write about or what your, your content writer, writer should write about. Could, could you elaborate a little bit more on how you actually find those people? Because I think that's, that's also tricky, right? I mean, just putting out a landing page probably won't bring, bring in a lot of like great applications. How do you yeah. find those engineers that are usually yeah, that usually don't laugh like writing and doing marketing. Like how do you find them and get them to, yeah. to join your content content program? Yeah, no, that's it's a good question. So I think, you know, like the like ideally you'd get your users. And in some, you know, some especially open source communities, people can set it up this way where, you know, you have uh, you know, the big open source community and then you can uh reach out, uh, you know, find you know, find folks in that community who write. And, and, you know, they wrote, they, they wrote things, they have personal blogs or, you know, they, they share stuff on, on Twitter and they talk. So like, you know, if people have this intrinsic motivation to be out there and talk, then it's likely that, um, you know, that, that they would do something with you as well. Right. Um, um, so, you know, you can, you know, if you have an open source product with a big, you know, internal community, you can, you know, try and set it, you know, try and find them this way. And I know many people did set it up this way. Um, for us, it was a bit different. You know, we, we just basically, um, you know, when we're looking for, uh, you know, different, like, you know, doing our research, looking through the blogosphere, you know, looking through who's writing, you know, on particular subjects, we would um, we'd reach out to those folks and, and see if they, you know, would write for us. And, and some of them, some of them did, some of them didn't. And, uh, but, um, you know, so, so, it's, so it's basically sort of looking for people who are already talking, who are already writing and, uh, and, and seeing if, uh, you know, they they'd want to write for you as well, and, and a lot of those people are uh, writing on you know many sites, and and it's it's sort of like a you know side gig um, you know that they that they do. So then you said usually you pay like three hundred to six hundred dollars per per article. Yeah, yeah, depending on the you know sort of like the the scope of this. Um, yeah. So. Mm-hmm. And how yeah. often how often do you post articles like in which which cadence? So right now, right now we're actually focusing a lot on uh, on improving articles like the previous ones. Like that's that's one of the things that you'll see uh, with uh, um, you know most uh, blogs that that have been around for a longer period of time, right? Uh, where you know over time you just need to improve things that you already have. Right now, I think we're doing probably maybe maybe one to a week, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so not not a lot right now. It's it's funny moment that you that we talk about it because um, mm-hmm. right now we're actually hiring for a head of content who would uh, you know who uh, I'd love to uh, you know bring in to scale this up you know and, and the thing you know with a 
big blog is that it's you know it's a big time investment you know and and when you you know you want to improve things and, and you want to like you know figure out the gaps in content and and and, and fill those gaps and improve you know and improve uh, you know all the all the technical stuff around it um it just takes a lot of time so um we're sort of uh, in the moment of bringing someone in to, to scale it back up yeah so if you are um a developer marketeer or kind of marketeer looking for a new role uh, reach out to reach out to Jakob. Um, sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Maybe moving a bit bit away from the from your content program, a bit more to your general view on developer marketing, because I know that you're talking to a lot of developer marketeers and also DevTool founders in your community through your newsletter, through like one on one sessions. What are kind of common, maybe quick wins that you can realize with them, and also common pitfalls? that you see that people always run into. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, in terms of like, uh, quick, quick wins, a lot of the times, um, it's, you know, it's communicating what you do, which is like kind of funny, but like, not, you know, like it, I, you know, I, it, it, it seems hard uh, sometimes, you know, when you are like really, um, you know, you know, the product very deep, you know, the, the users very, very well. And, and you just, uh, you know, um, it's hard to like communicate things simply. And then you sort of like are not sure exactly, you know, who should you communicate it to? Should you communicate it to the dev? Should you communicate it to the, the, you know, the VP that is, uh, you know, that is, uh, uh holding the budget and, and things like that. I think there are a lot of uh, problems around this, uh, where, um, people sort of try to talk to everyone and then end up talking to no one. And, um, and so understanding for, um, you know, sort of every piece of content, every website, every, whatever you create out there, right. Um, for every moment in that journey, understanding the context, you know, there's this uh, concept coming from uh, conversion copywriting called, uh, one reader, like always know your one reader. So understand, you know, what, you know, what do they know at this point? Who, do, who are they? What are their goals? You know, what are, uh, what are the problems? Like understanding that is, is, is really, really you know, helpful. And it, it, you know, if you, if you go through this principle, then, um, a lot of things get simpler and you can just communicate those things, you know, the, the way you want to. And so if you have a, you know, if you have a homepage to which, um, a lot of, you know, like most people who come to your website, not your GitHub, not your portal, like not your docs, but your website, if those folks are, uh, mostly VP types or architects or, you know, or, or business folks, right. Then write for them. But if it's mostly devs, then write for devs. I mean, I know it's simple, but it's, it's, you know, like a lot of people get it wrong. So, you know, you have a website with, uh, you know, tens of thousands of visitors and mostly devs. And then you write something that is just, you know, talking to the boss of their boss. And there's like maybe 20 a month of those on the site. Right. So that's, that's a, you know, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Right. So understanding that is, is important. And then, you know, one more example coming from content itself would be, um, um, you know, you write a blog post, right? You, it's a technical blog post for, uh, you know, for a dev. And I see it time and time again. With, that's, that's why I really want to bring it up. And devs who write it, they start a blog post by saying something that, you know, that businesses today, you know, businesses today are struggling with da 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 da, -da right? And, and then they go to, you know, to say like, you know, like to, to streamline something, you need to, you know, do this or, and then I'm, you know, and then one simple question is like, Hey, listen, like the one reader of this blog post is a, you know, is an engineer, right? Um, so would you take this intro and read it at a meetup at your local engineering meetup? Would you start an intro saying that according to, you know, Harvard business review, you know, like, <laughs> no, you like, it's, it's crazy. Right. But then you think about it, like you, like you're writing a technical post, right. For a technical audience. And you start with the HBR thing, you know, it's a. Uh, like, I'm not saying, you know, like no posts should start with it. They should like, you know, understand your reader. Right. Again. So I think it's, uh, it's one of those things where just, just doing this one thing at every stage of the journey, you know, when you're creating something, think of the person who you are writing to and think of that, you know, that developer, you know, friend you have, uh, and think of how they talk and think of how you would talk to them. Right. And then you'll see. And one more, you know, play around this is basically, you know, let's say you're thinking how to, you know, how to, uh, you know, how to 
uh, message your product or like how, you know, what's the messaging should be? Like how, how should you call your product? What ask your, uh, you know, your users, ask them how they describe the product to a friend. Mm-hmm. And then you'll see. And then it will be, it will not be about streamlining things. I guarantee you, you know, <laughs> it will, it will yeah. be, sim- it will be simple. It will be technical. It will be obvious to everyone, you know, what it is. And that, that's if your website, if your page, uh, and there, there are pages on the website that definitely target devs, you know, use that. And, and and you'll be fine. Cool. cool. And what are some common problems that you see? Yeah. Um. So one one thing that I uh, that um, I, I recently got got more into in in this past um you know few months maybe like six nine months something like that was um uh, connecting the things around you know marketing and 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 acquisition of of the developer uh, community right um. And connecting that to to sales, uh, you know, more closely, and, and understanding this this like whole the, the the full journey, you know. And um, it seems that there are a lot of things happening in the community around you know POG emotions and 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 how this POG um, uh, connects to to sales. And I think it's especially important for us and in, in, you know in, in the developer marketing community or people just uh, you know marketing dev tools to you know to to think about it because. Uh, most dev tools are either POG or open source, which is, you know, depending on the model you choose is a, you know, very close to a flavor of, of POG. Right. Um, and, and then it becomes, uh, you know, something where, uh, yeah, like you can bring those people and they will use it, they will adopt it, but then you need to monetize it. And then you have to think of like how you want to monetize it. And, um, and obviously there is a part of, of, uh, of your product, not, maybe not obviously, but a lot of the, the tools will have it, the, the self-served, you know, maybe some hosted version of something or, you know, so you have this like self-served, um, motion and then you have the big enterprise motion, right? Um, and, and, and that is visible when, when you look at, you know, packaging and, and, and pricing, et cetera. And now the, the interesting and tricky part becomes like, all right, so how can you, s- speed up and help people um, go from, you know, single user adoption to many user adoption to this enterprise adoption, right? And this is this is where it is like, you know, the, the whole notion of like product-led sales comes into picture and, and understanding like how to, you know, how to reach out, who to reach out, when to reach out, right? And and um, there was this amazing uh, podcast that I listened to from Elena Verna, uh, Ultimate Guide to Product-Led Sales. And she, you know, she, she actually mentioned, um, you know, this... That, that in order to do this well, you really need to understand, um, you know, find those good moments, right, in, in the journey. So even for a single account, you can have multiple um, moments where when you can reach out. So, for example, you know, people are, are visiting your, uh, you know, high intent pages, like maybe terms of service, or you see a lot of invites, or you see a lot of usage that is getting close to limits or something like that, right? And And this is usually a good moment to reach out. And then maybe nothing is happening, right? Like, uh, or, or, you know, like nobody's asking in your Slack community and, uh, you know, from that, that account and, and, and people are not really using it right now or something. It's, you know, it's, it's probably not a good moment to reach out, right? And I think, um, that's what's, you know, makes it really tricky because like there are so many signals into those, all of those different places that you want to connect, right? To, to actually get people to respond. Because we all know how hard it is to get a response from a dev, and and mm-hmm. you know, and, and with those motions, like a lot of times you you don't even go at a dev, like you you know talk maybe to the team leader or a you know or a per- person above uh, above them. But um, whatever you do with uh, you know technical folks, um, there should be a strong reason for them to talk to you, right? And if you know yeah. if, they, if they if they see that there are very strong signals, um, you know of of of, of adoption, or, or it's obvious that they may need some hand holding. That's a great moment, you know, and that's, that's, uh, you know, so she basically thinks about this in a, in a way of, uh, like product led, led, uh, accounts or, um, oh, sorry, product qualified accounts, right? And there are product qualified leads and accounts. And then, you know, thinking of, uh, who to reach out. Um, uh, typically you want to think about those accounts and then who within the account you should be reaching. Cause, um, yeah. you know, uh, you may have a junior dev signing up and then they use it and, but you, you should probably never reach out to them. Like, like that's not gonna, you know, do, you know, uh, too much, uh, much, much good. Um, so anyway, I, I, I think this is like very interesting and there are like a lot of, um, 
uh, quite a few, you know, companies. Your, yours, I'm, uh, I think, included, right? That that tries to tackle this this problem a little bit, and and you know, and and get all those signals from from different places, and 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 help people connect it to, uh, to 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 sort of like those traditional emotions. And I think a lot of the POG, and you know, especially you know, dev tool uh, dev tool companies, they they need it, and they are either build it in house somehow, yeah. you know, and you know, connected a bunch of weird things, or uh, you know, or they 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 look for uh, you know for for solutions to do it. Super interesting. Yeah, obviously, love to hear that since it's, it's exactly the problem space that we are that we are working in. I even like to think about kind of a concept of a developer qualified lead, because mm. if you have, for example, an open source product. Um, or something like that, you often don't even have product data, right? Like you don't even know if that company is using your product, but you maybe have like other data, like community engagement, website visits, those kind of things that give you an indication that, you know, if a certain account is visiting your developer docs 10 times, you can assume that they do something with your, with your library, right? Yeah. But yeah, super interesting to hear. Maybe to, to, to wrap, to wrap things up. What's your favorite resource on growing developer tools? I think that's especially interesting to hear from you since I guess you, you read every book, listen to every podcast out there. Recent, like one of the recent ones that I absolutely love is uh, uh, stuff that come out from uh, Hypergrowth Partners. And that's, uh, that's actually mm-hmm. a, a company that uh, Gonto created, you know, I mentioned before. So I, I really like a lot of things there. I do like uh, listening to you know founders and CMOs that you know uh, talk at, at uh, for example from you know I have a lot of resources coming from Saster uh, where uh, you know you can learn a lot of good stuff. I love those podcasts like yours or Scaling Dev Tools is is a is one that I really liked. Um, open source startups another good one and then you know within these I I try to like you know go down rabbit holes. So basically. When somebody mentions a book, I try to get it. Or you know, they mention like that person, uh, you know, is talking something interesting. I I follow them, and then you know, whatever they share, I try to you know see if that's if that's valuable, right? If I can uh, go go into that um, and learn it. So so I like those. One place that I consistently I consistently come back and read is the library from library from Heavy Bit. Like that's uh that they are uh, an investor VC investor from from the US focusing on dev tools, and I. Like there are just there's just like so much good content. I, I come back and, and there's something new and, and, and I think they they just produce stellar stuff and and you know, so if you do open source especially, like I think they're they're amazing. Cool. Yeah, lots of lots of gems in there. Um how much time per day do you consume consume <laughs> content around um <laughs> Growing developer tools. I, I I I I think it's like you know uh, I I spend too much time doing it, but I <laughs> I try to like you know I tell you what like have a process which which helps. So I what I try to do is I go through you know through my LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, through a bunch of different newsletters, Hacker News, uh, you know different places, and I whenever I see something interesting, I I just save it to pocket. And, and then I usually, cause I usually don't have the time to like really go deep on something at that time, maybe just, you know, some, some, something shorter, right. But I try to save it. And the same for podcasts. So I see something that is like, you know, maybe there are new, like new episodes here or there. I try to add them to my playlist and then, then listen to them, uh, you know, uh, later when I have time. So, so it's sort of like pretty much every day I, I, I look around and, and save things. And then every now and then I have a, you know, sort of like a bigger batch of time when I actually go and consume, you know, and, and, and go through, through all of those things. And then, you know, extract things for, you know, either for my swipe file, the, the developer marketing examples or for the newsletter or, um, you know, or, or look for, um, you know, just, just things, um, you know, to add to my, um, uh, resource, um, uh, resource list like actually something that i that i that i did um you know not that long ago but i i figured I, I, i'll just start you know keeping track of all those things and putting them in notion so i have this like big notion board with uh i think now it's like 350 resources or something like that um and they're like grouped by tags and i try to uh you know like put put new things there so that i can always come back to them and, and, and find them so um, cool yeah that should be public <laughs> i mean so like yeah, like I'm, I'm thinking what to do because I, I, I figured I'm just gonna add it as a like if you subscribe to the to my newsletter, you get it in a welcome email, right? Yeah. But I'm, 
I'm sort of wondering, maybe maybe I should make it public. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there would, there would be a way to make it public. I think it's fair to ask, yeah, ask yeah. for sign up or kind of give it as a as a gift. Yeah, yeah. So so it is. So it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I, I think I would say we we wrap it up at this point. Thank you so much again for joining me. Um, really enjoyed our our conversation. And yeah, maybe if people want to reach out to you, um, what's the best place to do so? Yeah. So, um, so definitely I'm, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn all the time. So, uh, you know, just go and find me, Jakub Chakon on, uh, on LinkedIn, or, uh, you can, uh, uh, you know, always go to developermarketer.com and either, you know, get the newsletter and reach out through the newsletter or just reach out to me. There's, you know, contacts there. So I answer every, every email. So yeah. Awesome. Or join us in the developer marketing Slack community. Oh yeah. I'm there if as you well. are not there yet. <laughs> All right, cool. Then, yeah, have a have a nice evening and talk to you soon. You too, Jonathan. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.